in a Seminole uniform. There are his numbers on the year. We are just about set and ready to go. First pitch, fastball misses as Jacoby Long steps in. And you see right there, two and two, three, nine, one, 25 innings, 34 strikeouts, but 14 walks. Key to him today is gonna to be that consistency with his fastball, and so far right now, two out of the zone. Dorsey went five innings against the Boston College Eagles in Brighton, Massachusetts last weekend. As the Hurricanes, you see Long at the plate. Viegas, Ancuve, Gonzalez, Carrier, Scanlon, Torres, Costello, Urso. Same lineup as last night as Cuve, one of the best freshman hitters in the country. You saw the 51 hits there. And he will come to bat third in the order in the inning as Dorsey walks Long on four pitches. And Chris, that has been the book on Dorsey at times, is trying to make sure he has command of the fastball to set up some of his nasty secondary offerings. Yeah, and, and you know, right now maybe first pitch, I mean, first batter jitters. Let's see how he settles in right here. Here's a strike to Edgardo Viegas. Viegas two for five with two RBIs. Last night, 0 for three in game one. Swing and a miss. They're on the off speed, 0 oh, and 2. Talking to Micah Posey about Carson Dorsey. He said we need him to give us five if he can. The Knowles bullpen a little thin here this weekend. As that one misses now 1 and 2. They got what they needed on Thursday from Jamie Arnold, right? Seven innings strong. We're able to protect the bullpen for the most part. Joe Charles, Brennan Oxford not available, but just about everybody else is available. A seminal team without Ben Barrett, Cam Leiter, and Connor Whitaker. Now it's two and two to Viegas. Alex, what's this two-strike approach? Right now, just looking to shorten up and put a ball in play. Got a man on first. So Trying to do a job and get him over. Got a big three-four hole here on the pool side. Into foul territory, and Smith giving chase. But it's on to the netting. With the way you've got Dorsey pitching against Viegas here, you see the hole between second base, first base. Yeah, holding the runner on opens that four hole up for sure. Dorsey to the heater, and Viegas stays alive. We saw Edgardo's numbers, north of 270. Two home runs, 20 ribbies. Does have eight doubles on the year. Now three and two. And when you're light in the bullpen, you don't want to be getting deep into counts. Four pitch walks, not ideal to lead off the inning, lead off the game. For Dorsey, looking to try to have him go five, like you said, Chris. Runner goes, Smith, only one play, it's to first. And he makes it. One down is Long, able to get into second. A good fastball by Dorsey, able to get in there on the hands of Viegas and be able to get the ground ball to Cam. One down, runner in scoring position for Daniel Cuvet. A top 10 third baseman according to D1 Baseball coming into the weekend. They do their power rankings. Just a star recruit out of high school where he played at Elite Squad Baseball Academy. Broward County native. Nasty pitch from Dorsey. Cuvet though watches it low for a ball. Yeah, Dorsey's come back to back breaking balls. Look at that OPS from Cuvet. Incredible. Three hits last night. That one who just misses the inside corner. And Dorsey with a little extra heat at 95 on it. 
you see that fastball right here trying to bury it in. Pretty good looking pitch right there. Didn't get the call. I was talking to Daniel Cuvet before today's game during batting practice. He said, I just love the sport of baseball. He said, it's one of my passions. And that's, that's refreshing. In a day and age where I think a lot of kids love being athletes, you try to find the kids who love the game itself and the grind that it requires. Cuve, one of them. As that one catches the bat, it'll be foul. And you're right with what you just said there. As a player, you have to enjoy the grind. You can't just enjoy coming out here and playing on game days. You've got to enjoy the process to get you to where you can be competitive and can compete on game day. Boy, that one misses the inside corner. Joseph Blumenauer, the home, excuse me, Mike Jarbo is the home plate up. Yeah, it doesn't look like Jarbo's going to be giving the inside corner much today. That's two right there that I think both were strikes, and Dorsey not getting the call. Swing and a miss that time. Change speeds. And Dorsey reports the second out of the inning against the talented rookie. And Dorsey going to the slider here. Kind of got away with one right there, left it up in the zone. And just, I think, it was one of those situations where you hear and you see Coupe's reaction. We get that slider backing up on you a little bit. It sometimes can become an effective pitch because he's expecting it to break a little bit more. Now two down. Long still at second. Miami would love to get on the board here, and they might just do it right there. Up the middle, Gonzalez touching home long, and the Canes strike here in the first. Dorian Gonzalez putting a really good two-out swing on this ball, driving it right back up the middle. Doesn't try to do too much with it, but I like the approach. First good pitch he sees on the inner half of the plate. He's just going to inside out that ball, driving it right back up center field. Long, easily coming in to score. And that's how you do it, Aria. That's how you score first, score, score in the first, apply the pressure. Especially with two outs. And Gonzalez now a hit in each of the three games on the weekend. Good start for Miami here in the top of the first. Florida State has already won the series. Kane's just trying to salvage something. They play Louisville next weekend. That won't be easy. Dan McDonald's group has started to figure things out. However, Virginia put up 21 on the Cardinals in game one of that series. Chris, you see Dorsey working mostly the inner half of the plate with the fastball here coming from the left side. I guess at what point does the pitch cross the strike zone here? Because if he's painting the inside corner, you have to think some way, shape, or form it's crossing the zone, right? Yeah, and I mean, you know, for someone with his velocity that he has on his fastball and the breaking ball, you want him to be able to establish it. But if he's not getting it, see there with the slider on the back foot slider, you know, if he can show that he can get the strike call with the fastball, that's going to make that pitch even more effective as well. So. You definitely, I think you're going to probably hear some talks between innings, I think, with Coach Jarrett, the home plate umpire here. You know, hey, man, I, I, we got to have that inside part of the plate. 2-1. He's got some life to that heater. Yeah, that one, 94. Lorenzo Carrier, a big frame. Gonzalez has the Canes on the board. He gets his lead at first. Cantu holds him there. Dorsey right by him again, 94. And so Carson Dorsey. JT, JD Artiaga, Miami head coach, saying that Hernandez might have the best pure stuff on this staff. And he is usually in the strike zone. Fastball, we talked about sitting about 92 to 94. He can run it up to a six if he needs it. And last weekend against a really talented Duke Blue Devils lineup in Durham. Six innings, one earned run, ten strikeouts, only one walk. That's going to be the key. Here on the road against Florida State, who's in their Sunday goals on a Saturday. <laughs> they did do it the other day. 
and it worked out for him. It did. So why not try it again? 0 oh, 2 to Williams. He's had a nice weekend. This time, lifts it a mile high. Who's going to call it? Coming in. Oh, and it's going to drop. Miscommunication. Williams will be in the second. Boy, that went into the Bermuda Triangle. And Viegas, Urso, Cuvay. Whose ball is it? Same song and dance, almost what we saw yesterday, Chris. You have Cuvay and Urso running back and hustling, but then you have Viegas kind of looks over to both of them with, like, are they going to call it? Did you call it right? But just the miscommunication as the outfitter, you've got to take control. You've got priority there to make the call, and you're the one coming in. It's really tough to go backwards trying to make the attempt there on the grab, but tough play. Yeah, and you know, it was the other way around. It was the Seminoles defense yesterday, and you're right. I mean, the crazy thing right there is Cuvay was completely cleared out, and he looked over at Cuvay. Cuvay had already surrendered, saying, I, I got no shot at this. And you're right, the outfielder's got to take control. That's outfielder's ball all day right there. And the best part of it all, it's a double in the books. I'll take it. <laughs> doesn't always have to be pretty. No, it doesn't. <laughs> Cam Smith, again, that inside corner going to be tough here for pitchers, at least early on, on the zone of Mike Jarbo. Man, well, as a pitcher, you, that's that's tough for these lefties right now. That's part of their game is that inside corner, and if you're not going to give it to them. Smith torches it. Right field carrying high off the screen. Williams is going to come home. He'll score. Smith ties it. One swing in the back. Florida State hitters continuing the storyline of yesterday's offensive dominance. Cam Smith thinks that one is out for a split second. You see he's just going to enjoy the swing. Watch it go. It's going to hit off the wall in right field. But the opposite field power comes through big. Back-to-back -back doubles for the Knowles. Really good stuff. And you got to love the raw emotion you see, too, right there from Cam Smith. You know, we talk about the inside corner, but then you, then you see that, oh, it, Cam Smith, 45 consecutive games. That's pretty impressive. 17th longest streak in history. Way to pay off your control room. Good job, Chavez. <laughs> 45 games in a row. That's impressive. A lot of things got to go right. It's, it's a body of work, and I think that's the most impressive piece. It's not just he, like he did one thing well one day. That's just your character coming through at that point. What was your best streak? Do you remember it? No clue. No clue. No clue. <laughs> That's but a great question. Maybe somebody out there knows, but not me. It's hilarious. You ask athletes that question, and they're never keeping track. But media folks, we obsess over it <laughs> for decades. Well, it's the fun stuff to talk about when you're on the other side, of course. Did Tibbs check his swing? He did. Hernandez making sure not to leave him something too sweet. Tibbs leads the country in ribbies. Marietta, Georgia native, suburb of Atlanta. Well, look at that OPS. My goodness. Mm. He has more home runs than strikeouts on the season. Easy power to left center. However, the park is going to hold it. And Viegas makes the grab, tagging Smith. And he's in the third. Heads up base runner right there by Cam Smith. Realizing that. Under control, getting an additional 90 feet. Now putting himself in a big position here for Ferrer to come through with a sack fly opportunity, something to the right side. Yeah, even just a ground ball, you know. I mean, if he's at second, those things don't happen. Couldn't agree more. Your infield's playing back. Nope. Who wouldn't off of Jaime Ferrer? That one catches the zone. One and one. Speaking of Ferrer, two hits last night. Jaime continues to swing a hot stick. You saw he comes in with an average above 300, 317 to be exact. 11 home runs. Power has started to tick north for Jaime. They worked on some things with his swing, trying to get some more lift and carry. He went to the Cape Cod League this summer. 
Well, he offensively produced. A Cape Cod All-Star. There you see your infield playing back, not playing for the out at home. He hits this on the ground. It's going to score a run. Urso is able to make the throw over. However, touching home, Lee Smith and the Knowles, a two spot here to take. Willing to give up a run for an out. Yeah, definitely early in the game, playing it back. Got some confidence in his offense to come back and score some runs. Here's Jackson West. First pitch was a strike. Second pitch fouled back 0 oh, and 2. West, one of the team leaders in on base percentage. The Tallahassee native, a leadoff hitter's approach there in the middle of your order. OPS near 1,000, 350 with the batting average. He has had a clutch gene this season for FSU. As he checks, that time third base umpire here this afternoon will be Brian Miller who called balls and strikes in game one. Another shift here. Chris, yesterday you said you didn't love pitching into the shifts. No, no, I didn't mind pitching in the shifts. Okay, I just okay. don't like, as a pitcher, you would think you'd like the shift. I just don't like it in the game you of baseball now. Yeah. Got it, you don't I like, love it. I don't love it. I like just seeing, you know, and we didn't have the shift. When I played, the shift was nothing. Don't date yourself yeah. like that. I, I kind of have to. <laughs> they date me right here. You see, 96 to 99. I kinda, oh, I'm kind of dated. <laughs> sell out. Uh, and by Jackson West. That's what he does. Works the count, count back full. I mean, I, I, when this season's over, I'm going to be interested to see just how many full counts this guy's seen all year. Because it seems like every time you look up, he's in a full count. Fouls that one back. Chris, you do a lot of work in the Tallahassee area with youth baseball throughout the years. You've seen Jackson West grow up in the Tallahassee area. Always has had a knack for working deep into counts. He does, and he has made so much stride, too, at the plate. He works hard. I mean, you're seeing it all pay off for him because he has worked his butt off to get to the position he's at right now. And it's a good thing to see when you see someone work hard to see the rewards. His half-brother, Gage West, played at Florida State a few years back. Gage was a Lincoln High Trojan. Jackson is a Childs Timberwolf. Rivals. <laughs> I was going to say, how does that happen? 3-2, <laughs> and he works the walk. What an at-bat from Jackson West. His 15th walk of the season, and the Knowles have a two-out runner. Yeah, that was an 0-2 count and able to work that walk. I mean, it just we talk about it time and time again every time we see him. He just grinds out at bats. From a patient eye to a hitter that's looking to do damage early, Marco Dingus steps to the plate. Yeah, Hernandez better be careful right here where he locates this pitch because this guy's looking to swing early in the count, like you said. Takes that fastball, oh, and one. Dingus, a native of the Empire State. Beekman, New York, I had to look it up. Where is that? It's actually close to the Connecticut border. Wow, they like, he's, I don't play no parts being consistent. He's at both teams, just not giving the inside corner on righties. We love that as hitters, definitely a hitter zone. Yeah, you, as a hitter, you're loving it. <laughs> Trying to take second West, gun down. Scanlon, a BB to second. And I just spot that fastball, and I think the inside corner is going to play a huge factor with how hard he throws. Yeah, I agree. Do up here for Miami in the second inning. See Scanlon at the plate, Torres and Costello. Hit him where they ain't. And Scanlon's got a single. That is the second hit here in the afternoon for Miami. Jack Scanlon going to hit what would otherwise be a routine ground ball to the shortstop, you'd think. But because Florida State defense is in the shift, you've got your shortstop, Lodis, shifted well over near second base. Going to fall right in there. Nice little hole action at the shortstop position. 
And there's that shift I talked about not liking, huh? Uh, hey, sometimes. <laughs> That's a, it's so tough because as a pitcher, you're just thinking, well, I guess you really have to go into thought process whether or not he hit his spots and whatnot because if they are shifted over, you'd think that he's going to hit it right into the defense, but you're making good pitches. That should be a routine out. Yeah. I, go ahead, Ari. Oh, no. You guys got it. Somebody I was, go. I'm like, I, I want to hear what you're going to say. topics. You keep going. <laughs> no, I was just going to say it. Sometimes you can, I feel like things can be overthought sometimes, you know, and it's it's a good job by Scantlin, though. I mean, maybe like you said, he's just not doing what he typically does and took advantage of that and said, hey, I'm going to keep my hands inside this pitch and just take it the other way. All I was going to say was we were down there in BP earlier, and Chris goes, I didn't know Scantlin was that tall. <laughs> he's a giant. That's a big man. 6'4". You don't see many catchers 6'4". Well, him and Cuvée both. Cuvée is 6'3", 240. I mean, that's a specimen. Mm -hmm. well, then you got Carrier at 6'5". So, I mean, Miami's got some big boys. Trying to climb the ladder to Torres, who started the weekend hitting high in the order. He was bad cleanup there for Miami on Thursday. Now he's moved to the seven hole for the last two ball games. Talented hitter. Fouls it back. Count will stay at two and two. Yesterday, Torres was 0 for 3 with a pair of punch outs. And in game one, he was 0 for 4 with three strikeouts. Five Ks on the weekend for Torres as he lifts that one. Left center fields, wind blowing. Williams, though, communicates, calls everybody up. And he makes the drop. One down here in the Miami second as Costello steps in. One of just a few veterans that Miami has. It's a young Hurricanes team that has been losing a ton of one-run ball games. And J.D. Arteaga was mentioning that they got to find a way to get over the hump. He says one game it's something, the next game it could be another. Pitching, fielding, the lineup, they're never in sync together it seems like right now. And the Canes have lost five straight ACC games. Yeah, and you know, it, Dorsey able to get that pitch right there. You know, it's similar to what we talked about kind of with Link, you know, getting hired a little bit later because of them making Omaha. Coming in last year, you see kind of where FSU was. Well, J.D. kind of, it's a little late for his hire as well. I know he was there as the pitching coach, but it still makes a difference. And, you know, let's see what Miami does next year when he's had that whole year recruiting, that whole year of coaching under his belt to be able to help them get them back on track. I was pretty surprised too with how transparent and forthcoming Link Jarrett was when asked the question of what, what's really the difference because you don't just go changing your co coaching methods from year to year, right? Like Link has been so good doing what he has his entire coaching experience and he was just like, I just had to go get better players. Like it just is what it is sometimes. You can coach them up, but you've got to have talent to be able to go perform. 100%, 100%. 1 pitch. Here to Costello with Scanlon on first and one down. That misses. That is the second walk from Dorsey. And so the Canes, two on, one down. And they pass the baton to J.D. Urso, the nine-hole hitter, in a threat mounting here in the second. Yeah, and again, I think Posey coming out here. I'm interested to see what happens here. Posey kind of waits out there for the home plate umpire to come out there and break up the huddle and have a couple of words. <laughs> hey man, I gotta have this. You're, you're killing me it's right now. It's not so funny, right? Yeah, it's really not funny. Like but it you're, is, yeah. you're, you're killing me right now. Dude. <laughs> and hey, call it on both sides. I don't think anybody's yeah. opposed to that. It's not like you're asking for it on one. Yeah. Open it up a little bit. Got to strike that time. Yeah, that looked like the same pitch you just walked the ladder on. So maybe the talk worked. We'll see. <laughs> Urso spent most of his career at D2 Tampa, where his dad Joe is a five-time national championship head coach. And in the state of Florida, people know about Tampa. Absolutely. That is a D2, not just a powerhouse. I mean, they run shop at that level. Man, it's been, and like you said, I mean, he's won five, but man, they've been, they're in the mix all the time.
High and tight. Urso, who J.D. Artiaga calls like a second coach. And he's playing shortstop out there. Patient hitter. They just needed a veteran presence in the lineup. We've got a couple of guys with him and Scanlon. Seniors, and Scanlon's on second. Urso, right field with Carey. It's drifting. Tibbs will leap and make the grab. Tagging from second to third goes Scanlon. But that is a big second out for Dorsey and the Knowles. And Tibbs making a nice play out and right. J.D. Urso, a good swing here, but this ball is just going to carry it. Didn't even look like he hit it that square off the bat, but kind of that wind tunnel out there in right field. James Tibbs doing a great job tracking it all the way to the warning track. And then you've got Scanlon at second base, does a good job tagging here. Runners are going to split. So big situation for Miami, trying to come through with two outs. Yeah, Tibbs really, you know, we talked about Tibbs always been left field first base for FSU, learning that right field. And that right field can be tricky here. Did a good job finding his location on the track. Base hit long. First pitch, attack, and we're tied again. Long continuing his great weekend. Hits in all three games. Well, Alex said we might have a shootout. Both coaching staffs thought that there could be a high scoring affair here in game three. There's a strike, 94 from Dorsey. And Dorsey, who's been used predominantly in the pen this season, has been a starter his whole life throughout high school. Juco ball as well. And so the decision to move him into the rotation when the Knowles had a couple of weekend rotation guys go down, it was pretty easy for the staff. What it does is it changes how you use your pen. And it does, and I think they've had enough guys show that they can get the job done to pin to trust to put Dorsey in the starting role. Viegas in a one-two count as Posey is watching his number three starter go to work. That one's foul. It'll stay one and two. Yegas, a three-year starter, and appeared in 60 contests a season ago. Teams have really been attacking him with the fastball. They spent some time at leadoff for Miami. Viegas two-strike approach though. Lefty-lefty matchup is it, tough, but look at how Viegas just lets this ball get deep because obviously he's trying to be ready for the fastball, right? Never want to miss the fastball, but down in a two-strike count. Breaking ball's proven to be the factor here. So doing a good job just trying to stay inside the ball. Good approach. Yeah, and I think if you look at the hits he's had this, had this weekend too, they've all been to left field. Yeah. Little looper. It'll hang in the air for Ferrer. Out number three recorded. Yeah. Yeah, I'm kind of with you. I'm a coconut girl, yeah. so. On the same island. Though. Yeah, beach, right? Beach no vibes. Doubt. Yeah, that, what y'all are talking about is different. That's, that's not <laughs> snow cone. Uh, you like medicine. You like eating medicine. There you go. <laughs> Dangerous. In the foul territory, Torres near the netting. It comes back and he makes the grab. Nice play there from Torres, the sophomore. We have seen some balls when they go into the air here at Hauser this weekend. It's been some tough reads. Yeah, and you see the flags drifting up to right. So that ball got up there and it just kept carrying to the stands. But Torres did a really good job tracking, checking every now and then. He looked down one time to make sure he's going to have room, feels that warning track. Great job, great catch.
First pitch strike to Cantu. And now quickly ahead, O oh, and two against the Knowles first baseman and the transfer. Talked about Tampa. Cantu from USF, where he played before coming to Tallahassee. That one nearly clipped him high and inside from Hernandez. And Chris, you and I have talked about the steadying presence that Cantu has brought to this Florida State team as that one misses high. And it seems like his ability at first has really had a calming impact on the rest of the infield. Well, and also it, it just gives him a security blanket over there. You know, he's an infielder. You know, hey, as long as I don't air it over his head, I've got a chance to do something. And Hernandez here with a really good breaking ball down and Cantu not able to stay alive, fouling it off. But he gives that infield, that security blanket, and knowing, hey, dude, even if you bounce it over here, there's a good chance I'm going to be able to pick it. And Alex, you know, as being a position player, I mean, there's nothing more rewarding knowing you've got a guy over at first base or, or lady over at first <laughs> base that can pick it when you throw it in the dirt. Absolutely. Just kind of that security blanket, a lot of confidence. You saw that heat map for Hernandez right there. Really low, wants that thing glove side and a little off the plate. So if he's not able to get that side of the plate today, it's going to be tough. Because that's where he gets a lot of his swings and misses. It takes a huge component out of these pitchers' games on both sides of the field. And I just feel like that's what, as a coach, you've got to be having that conversation. I think that's what we saw, obviously, in ending with go of, hey, man, you got to widen up the zone a little bit. You're squeezing these guys way too much. Yeah. Especially with, like I said, Hernandez, with that heat map for Hernandez, it's all over on that inside part to a righty and down and out of the zone like he did to Cantu for his swings and misses. Chris, what do you think so far of Hernandez and parts of the zone he's been trying to exploit? I mean, as you see, I mean, right now he's just going right at Fisher. Fastball's down in the zone. And I mean, that's another thing. You can People sometimes think you can't go down the middle of the plate. You can go down the middle as long as it's down or you elevate. You get that north-south, which you see a lot more now in baseball. It's just right down the middle, and it's you got to be careful. That's a fine line, and that's where that being able to be a good pitcher and not just a thrower comes into play. Can I get that ball down in the zone? Can I elevate it at the top of the zone or right out of the zone and not miss right down the middle? And Hernandez so far has done that pretty well this inning. Pitch number 40 is popped up in the infield drifting into foul territory and coming back oh torres a little adventure and he makes the grab lead off for miami here in the third first pitch from dorsey misses that inside corner buffet's had a big weekend especially a big game too three hits two home runs four ribbies now ahead 2-0 and oh here in the count. Alex, what's been the most impressive part of Cuvée's weekend for you as you look at his lines? I think just the maturity in the box. It's one thing to have power, but it's another thing to be able to use all sides of the field and be able to go the other way. I think with where baseball and softball both are now, your best hitters can hit opposite field with some authority. And so Daniel Cuvée, only a freshman, but a lot to look forward to throughout his career. Green light there on the 3-0, huh? That's a sign of respect. I'm just saying, you got to earn that. You don't come by 3-0 green lights lightly. Yeah, pun, pun not intended tonight. Yeah, and you talked about, you know, what, what you like about it. What I like, too, is how he bounced back from the first game going 0-3, for 3, not letting that bother and taking that into the next day. That time he grounds to short. Steady play from Lodis. And yeah, there's one down. Kube is going to be special. I mean, he's already making a case for ACC Freshman of the Year. And he'll be high in that conversation. And we've talked about the third baseman that Miami's had throughout the years. Uh, they found another one. They really have. And, and you're right. It's, I mean, Burris at Georgia Tech is going to be, be, be a tough one to beat right now for freshman. But, but Kube is all around it. And he's still got some big games left to play. I think the next question, too, is how can Coach Sardiaga make sure that Cuvé wants to stay and just continue his career because you got to surround him with greatness and you want him to elevate his game and continue to take the program to new heights? Well, you've got to bring in some guys next season that we've already talked about, too, right? It's only Coach's first season as the head coach. 
of the hurricane. So that's actually a really good point, Alex, because you're right. You know, you want to surround yourself and surround someone like that with greatness, and they want to bring those guys in. Well, Aloni's kicks that one. That one found a way to just get through everybody. Dorsey missed the hop. Then the ball ate up low, decent short. You see what? Hard hit ball by Gonzalez. But right at the middle, you, you thought that Lodice had it played. Tried to cradle it in as well, a little too close to the body. Maybe yeah. he could try to go out and get that just a little bit. Yeah, I think, like you said, funneled it in a little bit instead of playing the hop a little bit. But it's a balance, right? When can you bring it in and when do you have to go get it? Sometimes the toughest part of fielding ground balls. E6 given to Lodis. His second error of the weekend. But continue talking culture in Miami, what they're working to build, trying to keep players like Cuvée happy and wanting to keep wearing that Hurricane uniform on the adverse side. Obviously, it's something that Florida State experienced last season with Ling Jarrett coming in as a new coach his first season. The Knowles had it tough. Like, let's just call it what it is, right? Florida State baseball, it was a tough and long season last year, but guys like James Tibbs stayed the course, stayed loyal, and are taking this program to new heights. And one of the statements that we got to talk about and things pregame was you know he just was talking about his loyalty and how much he loves the garnet and gold and what the administration what the coaching staff what the city of Tallahassee has done for him personally and then his guy West over there said hey rewrite the script and I said yeah you guys rewrite it yourselves right you've got to stay to be able to rewrite it yeah and you're right you know me and we were me and you and me, me you and Tibbs were sitting there talking and the one thing I thought was really neat with James when he said it too was like Everything I've done, he goes, you see kids bounce around from high schools. I stayed at one high school. You see kids bounce around from travel ball teams. I was with two just because the only reason he was with two is because the other one didn't exactly. have a team anymore at that time. Um, and the one thing I said to him was, thank your mom and dad right. because that's who raised you. And for him to be the way that he is, that tells a lot about his parents. But it tells a lot about the character, too, though, that now he carries as an adult coming in this world that, hey, dude, I'm going to be loyal to the people who wanted, wanted me. And he talks about praising to coach Jarrett and what he's done and this coaching staff's really done this year of just keeping that course and I mean it's been really great to see and hear from all these players all year what they think of this coaching staff and the Padres director of scouting for the MLB said that Tibbs filled out the questionnaire better than any other prospects he's had so far this year how about that that's again just another thing that James Tibbs does well is just showing you the whole package that he's going to bring to a team. Tell us more. What else did he say? <laughs> <laughs> well, I would have to talk to our producer, Alex DiCapua, <laughs> for more information. <laughs> that is all her. West squeezes. Nice play from the catcher. That's two outs. You got to give Dorsey. On the mount. Oh, that inside half of the plate. Wow. Not happening. This just not existent right now. You know, we talked about with different head coaches throughout this season. Mike Posey for Florida State, Dan McDonald, head coach of Louisville. Chatted with J.D. Arteaga a couple times about TrackMan, the, the digital device that allows you to see balls and strikes and really be able The great umpires, essentially. And it's tightened the zones all around college baseball. And I think some coaches are, are getting a little frustrated with the lack of strike calls. And they said in the college game, we need it to be a bigger strike zone. Yeah, even if it's just, you know, I'm not saying you got to go line to line by any means, but you got to get that ball right off the plate. Smith that time races to third and beats Gonzalez. 100, the capacity. Mario Masudi, Chris Chavez, Alex Powers. And a three-person booth here on what has been just a gorgeous weekend. And the Noles looking for the sweep against Miami. Williams and Smith. It is now two and one. 
Sophomore from St. Augustine. Met his family a couple of nights ago on Thursday. Mom and Dad said they are just shy of the Jacksonville St. Augustine border, right there on 95. And I sat right next to his parents at the Florida game at Florida. And he had a big game that game. Mama was super proud. Hernandez continuing to try and keep the Knowles bats at bay here long enough for his offense to get going. It's two to two as that one fouled back. Florida State got not a lot of pushback from Miami starter yesterday, Rafe Schlesinger. Nine hits, seven earned runs. The Canes, though, started two lefties against FSU, which the book has been the lineup struggles more against the lefties than the righties. Not that time. Lodis rips it. Does he want to? He does. He's digging in. And he's got a double. And just laying it out there, diving into second base. That's just pure heart. Of course, hustle right off the bat helps. Yeah, I love really the aggressive base running. Yeah, I was going to say, I love the aggressive base running right there because now you're in scoring position, too. I feel like one of the things, too, that I've noticed more in baseball as opposed to softball is you have many more doubles down the line. And I don't know if it's necessarily just because of the distance of the field and how much ground they have to cover where your outfielders are, are playing. But in softball, most of your doubles come gap to gap, right? You don't see as many hits down the line, but the game of baseball, they use the total part of the field. And I think you may be right. It probably is the distance. Um, but that is interesting that you're saying that you don't see as many. Do y'all just, I mean, typically in softball, they just not hit it down the line as much anyways, just in general? I think it, it's a little bit of that, but it is also just where your outfielders are playing. There's just less room to have to run. And so I think that softball has more of the advantage defensively to be able to make those plays. I think as a hitter, it's tough because you, you lose that whole part of the field. Right. Not to mention corner infielders being able to hug the lines. Exactly. In baseball, you say no doubles defense. That ball's got carry. Williams tattoos it off the street. It'll be an RBI. Florida State's going to retake the lead. Well, I guess Williams said, well, I can't bunt, so I'll just hit one off the screen. <laughs> the second double here of the afternoon for Max Williams. Williams doing a great job. I love how he almost hears our conversation and wants to drive one deep to the gap because it's so hard to do hitting that ball straight up almost right on center field, but does a good job getting some carry and lift on the pitch. Doubles and extra base hits are so beneficial for the offense. It's so tough to string together a couple of singles and several at that back to back. Extra bases definitely allow for some run opportunities. I'll tell you what, it's funny too because and all the years here, how that screen, you know, tears down. It seems like that one last little one always catches so many balls right there. Maybe that's why they built it that high. Yeah. <laughs> we'll see what Williams has done in his last two games. Now, we talked about it leading off, right? Is it Diamez Ross, Max Williams? If you're going to keep Max Williams in, do you move him down the order? There's a lot of swing and miss. He doesn't necessarily get on base a ton. As Smith. Right center field, big fly, Cam Smith.
same time, I'm going to be fine. He just tries to hit that line drive right over the shortstop's head. Yeah, it's a big league approach, no doubt, for Cam Smith. And Cam, a lot of swing and miss last season in his rookie campaign. The MLB scouts wanted to see him reduce the whiff rate. He's done that, worked on some things this summer, trying to quiet his approach, his hands lessened his stride. He's been able to get more balanced, he said, and be able to get to the ball quicker. The path is quicker to the ball as he gets his curtain call from the Owser faithful. Easy to dream on, though, right? Look at the size. It's everything you want a ball player to be. You see Hernandez 0-2, he did 0-1. That breaking ball down, out of the zone, trying to get Tibbs to chase. Got him to chase it 0-1. Tibbs able to lay off right there. One, two coming to Tibbs, misses outside. Alex, you've been a part of some really good middle of the orders. And this Florida State middle of the order, when you talk about Cam Smith two, Tibbs three, Ferrer four, they can do a lot of damage as Tibbs gets under it. And again, who's going to have it? Long run, long. Again, no pun intended. Jacoby Long makes the grab. <laughs> <laughs> pun fully intended. Come yeah, on, you did that on purpose. Yeah, yes, I did. just like we always did that talk on about. purpose. You got me. But center fielder doing what a center fielder is supposed to do. He took control of that situation, came in, made it look easier than it seemed like it was going to be. And what I like about the Florida State offense, too, is it's kind of just the approach between, well, even Max Williams at the top. I mean, he's a hot hitter right now, too. But you look at two, three, four consistently and then throw in a really good one and five as well. But it's just like pick your poison. I mean, tough, tough day on the mound. Yeah, and <laughs> you talked about it yesterday, Aria. I mean, yeah, you talk about Tibbs. I mean, Cam Smith, Tibbs, and Ferrer. But then you got Dingus. Then you got Cantu. Then you got, I mean, you just look at the lineup in general, and it's like as a pitcher, you're going, do I ever get a break where I can just go fastball right down the pipe or even fastball in the thirds and just having it bat where, hey, I know if I throw it here and he puts it in play, it's still nothing's going to happen. It's going to be a ground ball, maybe a fly ball. And you just don't have that in this lineup, man. Uh, one of his keys was I have to have nine guys who can impact the baseball. Nine guys, righty, lefty, I want variation. Can we all leave the park? That is the goal, and he has that now in this lineup. Nine kids, even Jackson West, right? Yeah. Had a home run against Florida. Yeah, and it was a bomb. I mean, it wasn't like he just barely scraped it. Got yeah, on he... the patient A.B. from Jaime Ferrer. Mm -hmm. Things are just, I mean, the hitters are feeding off of each other. And Alex, you can attest to this as a hitter. I mean, hitting's contagious, but it's not just the hitting. It's everything. It's it's the competition between y'all. You know, what are you going to go out there and do? Everybody wants a piece of the pie, right? You start seeing how contagious it really is. Momentum carries. And you have one guy that gets a hit, one guy gets on base. You want a piece of that, too. And I love that approach because it's not the feared approach, right? It's not like, oh, I don't want it to be me. It's like, no, absolutely. Put the bat in my hands. Off the end of the bat, and West flies out to Viegas. That is the second out of the inning as Ferrer retreats back to first. And Ty McGee, Florida State assistant coach, he was commenting about the chemistry that his lineup has right now. And it's you don't want to move people around too much because the impact it has on the guy behind him, as you guys were just touching on, it does make a difference. And so if you know, maybe Max Williams isn't your prototypical leadoff hitter, but everyone else behind him likes having him in front. Then if you get eight and nine on, one becomes a power hitter, right, in a spot to drive in runs. And Williams has done that throughout the year for Florida State. Yeah, and you, you said it best. I mean, you literally turn the tables around when you get to the bottom of the lineup, and you could get a guy like Cal Fisher hitting today in Faroe's spot, but... Fisher, Lodis, not only can they leave the yard, but they can be table setters too. And you saw it last inning, Lodis, or I'm sorry, last inning, this one with the double and then followed up by another double. So, I mean, it, it just it never ends and it's never easy in this lineup for any kind of pitching staff. I mean, you look at it so far too, Hernandez to two and two thirds now has given up five extra base hits already in the game. They've seemingly just pushed the right buttons all season long. There's a weekend at Clemson. I think they would all like to forget about and other than that, Florida State's been downright dominant. They have just found ways to win one guy after another. Some days, it's the lineup. 
Sometimes it's the pitching staff. The bullpen has stepped up when they've needed it. Been a complete team effort all year long for FSU, who is in the thick of not just hosting a regional race, but perhaps being a top eight national seed. Yeah, and you said it best. I mean, they want to forget Clemson, but in a way, I bet the kitchen, the coaching staff doesn't want them to forget it because it's the offense that weekend was outstanding. The defense didn't let them down either. It was the pitching staff and mainly the bullpen. But now you look at, like you said, in other games, the bullpen's been lights out. So now you start putting those pieces together. I think that was a spark plug for them because since then, they have been the team that they want to be and they were early in the year. Here's that 3-1. Misses inside. Dingus works the walk. Two on, two out. And they, they talk about response, right? After that weekend, Florida State, they bust back to Tallahassee. They get in around 2 a.m. They all get just a little bit of sleep, and then it's off to Jacksonville to play the Florida Gators, who they run rules in front of over 8,000 fans, mostly Garnet and Golds. And since then, the Knowles have, I mean, they've been on cruise control. I don't yeah. know about you, Chris, but some of the best lessons I ever learned and the quickest response times I had were after moments of failure because it's <laughs> sometimes the best teacher that we have. And you are exactly right. I mean, everybody wants to see success. You see nowadays only people post mainly success on social media, but it is that failure that makes you who you are as a person. And... That's why I think that coaching staff doesn't want people to forget about that Clemson weekend. Like, I want you to know what that feels like because you don't want to feel that again. I think there's something to be said, too, that all of Florida State's losses so far are coming from ACC teams. I mean, it's just such a testament to how great the conference is. And perfect in the midweeks. Mm -hmm. Elite teams find ways to win midweeks. Those are the toughest. <laughs> and they are. We talked to J.D. Arteaga about it. And he said, you have to have a deep pitching staff, kids who can step up and kind of give you innings and eat up outs. And then having the offense that Florida State does helps against midweek arms. They've been able to really maul their way to a couple of those. Yeah, and you've talked about it. And it's changed drastically in the last few years with midweek teams. Because back in the day when we were playing, that was pretty much a stat builder for your teams with the midweek teams. But the talent in baseball in general has just gotten better. And I think it's in softball, too, with travel ball and all this stuff. Players have just gotten better, and now even these mid-major schools and even less are able to go find talent and get them to their schools. Well, hot take. I think that's because of the transfer portal. I mean, we talk so much about our opinions, and sometimes they're not always positive about the transfer portal, but I do think that's one of the things that have been most beneficial with the ability to transfer is to strengthen baseball across the country and softball across the country, Chris. Yeah, and I think we all kind of agreed. We don't totally dislike the transfer portal, but we do, I think me and you are on the same page, one transfer. I, I we should right. be able to transfer more than one time. And I think, you know, everyone needs that one time because they, they need to start over sometimes. But when you start doing it over and over again, I think that's what's making it kind of annoying with everybody. Swing and a miss here for Cantu. It's so far through three innings against Dorsey. Dorsey's career high in pitches was 72 against Boston College. He's about there right now, and as I say that, good timing. Some activity heading towards the Knowles pen. Yeah, ideally, you'd like to see him get through this and maybe one more, but with that pitch count creeping up right there, this might be his last inning. Yeah, you see Armstrong and Abraham down there getting loose. If you set forth goals, Chris, of, hey, I'd really like to see you get through five innings today, obviously you can't really help sometimes if your opponent is putting balls in play and having some success, but how much as a pitcher, an athlete yourself, are you trying to push your own self of, hey, no, I think I can go more? Well, I think typically, and you, you can contest to this, you don't have to be a pitcher to know this, it's you want the ball. Right. Give me the ball. It's going to take the coaching staff to know that, hey, we need to go get him. Because if you're a competitor and you're on the mound, you're going to be like, give me the ball. I'm good. Don't worry about it. I'm fine. You're going to keep wanting to roll through it when at some point you're like, hey, look, I get it. And that's where the coaches have to come. It's kind of like a parent coming right. in. And I know best. Where, yeah, hey, I, I know you can throw another one, but what could that possibly do for you down the line by letting you throw one more inning when we need to get you out? Because you just haven't built up to that yet.
They'll give a hit there to Costello, an infield hit. And Urso. Now at the dish, one on, nobody down. Dorsey, new career high in pitches. As a seminal. You're getting a couple of check backs there to first. And you wonder if stall ball is on to get some guys warmed up and ready to go as fast as possible. Might see Jackson West with the old stroll to the mound. Here momentarily is that one. Fouled away. Oh, and one. Yeah, they've sat Armstrong down the pin. It's just Abraham kind of getting fired up and getting loose. J.D. Urso, 0 oh for 1 in the 9 hole. Thought we might see some Antonio Jimenez this weekend. Have not yet, other than really as a defensive substitution. It has been Urso's series. He's in an 0-2 hole. Watches it high, one and two. Good spot right there for Dorsey. He can now come back with another fastball if he needs to or bounce that breaking ball right here. Swing and a miss. A strikeout for the southpaw, his third. You see that fastball missed the spot a little bit, but still able to blow it by Urso right there. Dorsey was drafted back in 2022 by the Rangers in the 17th round. Instead, opted to go to Gulf Coast State. And 7 and 1, 99 Ks in 66 innings for Dorsey. 2-4-3 ERA. Was a top five junior college prospect according to Perfect Game. He can run it up to about 97 out of the pen when he's just emptying the tank. And again, it's a lot to like about the projectability of Carson Dorsey. But I think that's why you're seeing a little bit better, in my opinion, from him as a starter next to a reliever is he's had to tone it down a little bit so he knows he can go longer, and he's had better control with that fastball. When he comes in sometimes there and he's gassed up and it's 96, 97, he hadn't had the control that he's need to have, and it's led to some, you know, hate to say it, but some long balls that you wouldn't like to see. And you saw it in his last start. I mean, he really looked good. Now, I even think today, yeah, Miami's put the ball in place some, but as a whole, stuff's looked really good. He's given up three grand slams all the year. Couple at Clemson. That was tough. Blake Wright, I'm sure he would no longer like to see Blake Wright no. in the, uh, no, the batter's box. I don't think FSU in general would like to not see Blake Wright. One and two to Jacoby Long. Hitting over 400 in ACC play this season. 321 on the year overall. RBI single in this one already. Took over leadoff hitting duties last weekend at Duke and has not relinquished. Two, two on the ground, diving off the glove of Smith. Heading to third base is Costello. Runners on the corners and one down. This ball was hit hard from Long. We have Cam Smith playing right in that 5 6 hole. I, I wonder if he could have just tried to stay on his feet, knowing that him and Lodis were kind of right next to each other and would have crossed paths there. But good effort by Smith. Tough play all around. Relaying yeah. it in a second, too, I think was a smart move. Oh, yeah. Costello, great read right there. You know, Cam made a good effort, but just that ball getting away from both him and Lodis once it hit off his glove. Costello able to get to third. But you keep it long by getting it to second. Like you said, keep it long at first base. Weeks. Same with Ben Barrett. Two very key arms for FSU. Connor Whitaker. They're not optimistic. He's still got some imaging to get done and some opinions he needs, but uh, they were not happy about uh, what they heard with Connor Whitaker. And you just kind of hope for the best for that kid who has been so important for Florida State out of the pen as a starter throughout his career. 
Yeah, and you said it best. I mean, he's kind of been around and been able to do everything for FSU and all they asked and has never complained about anything. He just really hoped for the best for him and for his future. Viegas, left center, drifting is Williams. The wind playing some havoc, touching home. It'll be a sack fly for Viegas. Miami gets one back. First pitch, high to Cuvée. 93. Look at that, Cuvée, among D1 freshmen. Hit machine. Pretty impressive right there. There's that breaker. And it's one and one. John Abraham from Jesuit in Tampa, the powerhouse program. Swing and a miss, climb a ladder. Again, kind of now we'll have him where you want him. You could go up there again or hit with that breaking ball. But if you throw it here, you definitely want to miss a little off the plate. One, two, coming to Cuvée. Runner on first. Misses, swiping the bag. He was going long, has it? Would have been a tough play regardless. For Jacoby Long, he's now four for five on the year swiping bags. Even to Cuvée. Yeah. And he went around. Breaking ball. Abraham's bread and butter gets the Knowles out. Then the Knowles. How about Tibbs? Smith, Arnold, says Fisher. Right to Cuvée, first pitch. And one down. Chavez, we talk about Arnold in the year that he's having. He saw the ERA, 1 3 4, top five in the country. His elevation has taken Florida State to another level. Yeah, and and it was a, I mean, and taking nothing from Arnold because Arnold's season has been just unbelievable. It's been him and Leiter together, I think. You know, obviously you haven't had him. Arnold's moved into that first, you know, I want to say Friday night start, but he's had, obviously had Thursday night this week. But, I mean, he's been nothing short of spectacular in everything that he does. And the bad thing is, though, to win an award like that, it's kind of like the MVP. You don't see many pitchers get it. But if there's a pitcher right now that, that could be in that talk like he is, it's that guy. Because, I mean, he has gone out and done everything they needed him to do as a starter. Him and Chase Burns of Wake Forest, they're going to meet up next weekend in Winston-Salem. That's going to be a lot of fun on Friday night as Lodis fouls it off. And when we talk about some pitchers, you've got to talk about the hitters. And Tibbs and Smith, Alex, your first extended look at them this weekend, live and in person. What stands out about those two in the middle of Florida State's order? When I think of those two, I think body of work, and I said it earlier with Cam Smith at the 45 consecutive games that he's reached base safely, but same with James Tibbs, what he's been able to do year to year, I think it is so much a testament to these guys' ability and their character throughout the years when they can make those adjustments once the teams find out who they are. And for James Tibbs to be having the success that he's having now in year three here, it's really impressive and then same with Cam Smith last year coming off freshman year this year continuing the streak it's pretty incredible they have led the charge for Florida State in that lineup here over this rivalry week as they're calling it swept the Gators looking for a sweep of the Miami Hurricanes who swept the Knolls one year ago in Coral Gables. Lodis goes down. And that strikeout, just number three from Hernandez. Yeah, good fastball right down the pipe. Lodis not able to catch up with it, 93. So quickly two down now in the inning. We talked about Florida State, who has now just struck out 11 times this series. After that third one from Hernandez, swing and a miss from Williams, and that's been something I think the Knowles have improved upon over the last couple of years, especially under Link Jarrett. 
cutting down on the swing and miss. Yeah, especially like you said, not just like it's the last few years, but last year alone too. I mean, this everything that you see with this team, we, we talk about it. It seems like it's a broken record for us because we keep talking about it, but this team has just improved in every aspect of the game, whether it's cutting down on swings and misses, whether it's offensively hitting the ball of the park, whether it's defense, pitching, it's all. Their entire game has just gotten better. Quick inning, though. Forks with Florida State baseball. That passion's returning, and Chris, Tuesday night here, I mean, I've never seen it. I don't know about you, people climbing the fences outside to try and get in to watch the Knowles beat the Gators. It was it was remarkable, quite honestly. And it was, and I have been lucky to, to experience it that crazy before, but in a long, it's been a long, 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 long time. I experienced it as a player. Matter of fact, Super Regional against Auburn. We had people back then, the parking lot, you could bring the cars all the way up because the bullpens at that time were still down the lines. So you could actually, you had people bringing their trucks and backing them right up to the, and they're tailgating on the backs of their trucks during the games. And it was it was pretty special, but that kind of reminded me of that, of the people sitting on top of the fence and them having to go out there finally and tell the people they had to get down. They were turning people away at the gates. Yeah. I was asking, how many do you think you could have fit? And they said easily over 8,000. Maybe nine for the game against Florida on Tuesday. Official capacity, 6,700 here at Dick Hauser. They've had some cool ideas out there on the plaza. They actually have our broadcast going in 8K yeah. on the screens. You can buy some drinks and watch right outside Hauser the last two days. The demand has never been higher for Florida State baseball. As that one is going to be safe as Abraham didn't complete the tag with the ball in the glove. You hope Florida State's hurler is okay. So he shakes it off. I think he's fine. He lost the ball in the glove. Gonzalez gets that one right off the end of the bat there. Abraham tries to chase him down, and he seemingly does. Just kind of loses the entire glove. Therefore, he also loses the ball. Tough play. I mean, How much you can do there? I no, I mean, it's a, yeah, it's a heads-up play by him. He actually made the right play. Just, just got to hold on to it, yeah. They're going to give it an error hmm. on Abraham. That's a tough error right there. You pitchers aren't used to getting errors much. No. Mine are, mine are typically on pickoffs or <laughs> something like that, you know, <laughs> throw, throwing them away. But, you know, that's just a tough one because, you're. I mean, I don't know. That's tough. I will say this, though, if I am pitching right now, I'd rather they give me the air. Right. <laughs> because if I was a screw up right here and they were to score, it's an unheard run. <laughs> well, for Dorian Gonzalez, it's the second time in the game he's reached on an air in as many at bats. Now the big frame of Lorenzo Carrier. I don't mean a big frame. Six foot five. There's a strike before the weekend started. Some of the Miami staff told me you need to watch Carrier take batting practice and they were right. It is truly a spectacle to watch this kid. I mean, he leaves the park on almost every swing. Right center field, carrying Williams, drifting. It's Tips who makes the grab. Trying to tag into second and getting there is Gonzalez. Tell you what, I don't think Williams ever heard. Or did Tibbs ever hear Williams say, I got it? And you see them communicating right now, even like. <laughs> They're going to cover ground pretty similarly. It's going to go right in between them. Tibbs, yeah, you see Williams going right behind him, too, with the glove. But really good base running here by Gonzalez. It's really good execution, just knowing the potential hiccup that you might have. Easily sliding the second. Get that runner in a scoring position here for Jack Scanlon. And that is, like you said, that's a tough Tough call right there, too, because you're thinking, okay, if he botches it and I'm halfway, I might score. Right. But if they do catch it, you know, so it actually worked out for him, though. It ended up being really smart. Oh, he pulled the string. 
Scanlon waves. Tell you what, you don't get to see that from Abraham a lot. He's usually breaking ball fastball, but he's done, that's two changeups in a row right there. Look really good. The 1-1. One, one. Scanlon, three. yeah, <laughs> catches a piece. Chavez, you were known for the off speed. You were able to really pull the string. That slider good too. What's the what's the key to being able to live off of your secondary pitches? It's just being able to throw them any time in the count for a strike. So I, you know, I was mainly a fastball breaking ball guy, and then senior year was able to drop down through the fastball and slider from down, you know, sidearm as well. So it kind of gave me four pitches. Um, but you've got to be able to throw the breaking ball for a strike at any time in the count. If you're able to do that, that changes everything for a hitter. I was just going to say, there's nothing worse, too, especially, like, I think of a 2-0 count, like, one of my favorite counts to hit in. 2-0, whether it's in softball, a changeup, or just something off speed, you're just like, mm, really? I'm like, <laughs> yeah, that's not what I was sitting at all, right? You don't want to miss something hard when you're up in the count like that, but as a pitcher, it's super beneficial. Scanlon yanks it foul. And into the right field bleachers. And so there you go. I mean, you, Alex telling you exactly what I'm telling you as a pitcher. She's right as a hitter. I want to be able to know 2-0. I know you're looking for a fastball. So as a coaching staff, they got to know, hey, you can throw that breaking ball for a strike right here. Let's see what Abraham goes with here in the full count. He missed. And two on here in the Miami fifth. Obviously, Torres isn't the guy you want to see here, but not a bad idea. You got a base open. Now you got a double play in order. Jackson West coming out for a conversation. Abraham at 20 pitches. Andrew Armstrong, who did pitch in game one. Well, by it, just six pitches total. One hit, it was earned. It was the home run, I believe, Jacoby Long hit off of him. High off the scoreboard there in game one. So a short outing has Armstrong fresh, and they're going to waste no time. Going right to him. Two on for Miami as the Knolls turn to the veteran Armstrong. Well, on cue of you saying it, coming in with a fastball right there. Gonzalez at second, and Scanlon at first. Miami trying to work themselves back into the game. Here in these middle innings, two and out to Torres. Torres has had a tough weekend. Still looking for his first hit here in the series. And Alex, just like we talked about, 2-0, off speed. Tough. <laughs> Tough. But then it's just always in the back of your mind, too, as a hitter. If you know if they're going to throw it 2-0, they'll absolutely throw it in any count. So they go with here, 2-1. In there for a strike from Armstrong, J.D. Artiaga, saying that jump in competition from non-conference play to ACC play can really be hard for young players to make that adjustment. And it's happened to Torres. As he's continuing to get ABs against elite pitching. Hits that hard, gloved by Fisher. Step on the bag and the double play. Oh, baby Florida State's middle infield turn. Kane's bringing in a new pitcher. Not who you'd like to face for your first batter. It is Miles Caba. Cam Smith at the plate. There's Kaba, sophomore, Valrico. 
6-1-205. And therefore a strike at 92. Oh, Canada being sung here at Hauser as Smith tattoos a ball to left center field running grab Viegas on his horse. Viegas got a great jump on that ball. That ball was scorched. He read it off the back quickly, was able to get there and actually made it kind of easy. Hundred and thirteen exit below right there. I was just gonna say if you're Cam Smith, you're still pleased with that at bat, squaring the ball up, hitting it on the barrel. Absolutely. Not much you can do about the outcome, but we talk so much about that process. That right there is the process, still hitting balls hard, maybe just right at defenders. And we made fun about it yesterday too, about a couple of the balls flaring in. Cam got a flare yesterday. Hey, so there it goes, the baseball gods. It's the baseball gods. The law of averages. Yep. Tibbs guys a base hit. Does he have two? You better believe it. Double. James Tibbs here in the fifth with an out. One of the things I love most about James Tibbs is look at how much he's able to slow the game down. Just so steady in the box in that off-speed pitch there. Drives it to the pull side. That's what you can do when you're short to the ball long through it. Ari, you said so much that he was working on his hands in the path in the zone to contact. Really good stuff from Tibbs. That's just really good baseball 101. Yeah, I mean, he, he sits on that breaking ball. There's no lunge in there. Head sits still. He stays in that back hip. Just real easy. Riding through the zone. Yep. Alex, an 0-1 breaking ball that's, that Tibbs was all over. I, but that's why he's so good. Like I said, he's able to slow the game down just mentally, just seeing the pitch out of the hand, able to adjust. Here's Ferrer. One of the things, too, that I've noticed about James Tibbs with your earlier question was he never seems to overswing. And that's one of the tidbits that I was given when I was a player was AP. Your 100% swing is not as good as your 85% swing because you're much more under control. You see the pitch so much better. That mental part of the game for Tibbs has always been there really in his career. I mean, he hit like that at Pope High School in Marietta. And he's been a career 300 hitter. First two seasons, now above 400. It is a special, special season. And we talk about ACC Player of the Year candidates. Tibbs is thick in the conversation. Ben Miller at Duke's been pretty awesome, too. If there's somebody better than Tibbs right now, I, as a whole, just watching him all year, I'd, I'd really like to watch their whole season as well, because I'll tell you what, Tibbs has been as good and solid as anybody in this entire country. I'm just looking at his numbers coming into today. 516 OBP. 25 walks to 11 strikeouts, 15 home runs at 58 RBIs, 423 average. I mean, when's the last time a Seminole hitter had that kind of stat line? James Ramsey? Yeah. Uh-oh. Right center, Smith. It's carrying towards the wall. It's going to stay in the park. Long. Had to get over there and camped under it, but it been. So after the fly out by Ferrer and Tibbs at third, it's two down with West. A good fastball by Cabo right there, 93 miles an hour. And here's the 0 1 from Cabo. On the ground. And the play made. Side retired, Urso. Link Jarrett pulling Abraham when he did. Did you would you have left him in to kind of let him figure that out in that inning, or, or did you think the move was right timely wise? I like matchups, so I would have thought he'd have left Abraham in to face the righty. But again, that's why he's the head coach. I, I'm in support of a short leash sometimes. Sometimes you don't have time to let the pitchers figure it out themselves. And yeah. I, I say that in both games of softball and baseball. I'm 
really not opposed to sometimes just quick leash. Well, and, and you look at the season, where you're at in the season, too. He's seen enough of his pitchers to right. know, I know if he's got it or he doesn't. I feel like Armstrong can come in and get the job done. He's done it, and he did. Armstrong came in, got the ground ball, got the double play. And Link's playing for the sweep. I think that's very telling. 100%. 3-1 count here from Armstrong to Costello. And there for a strike. You saw a popping out of your bug earlier. It would be remarkable if the Knolls close this one out. First time since 1960 that the Knolls have swept the Gators and Miami in the same season. Oh. Take a bow. Alex Lodi climbs the ladder, a web gem for the shortstop. Get up. Lodis getting some air under those feet. Look at the late grab. I, I love, too, how he timed that so perfectly. That one hit on the nose. So good piece of hitting by Costello, but Lodis, really good glove. And stairway to a web gem, huh? I mean, he gave that little grin over to Cam Smith right after he <laughs> caught it. Hey, maybe they just talked about it. That's right. Be ready. How about the defense from Florida State last two innings? I mean, it's been remarkable when we talked about it. I mean, FSU's entire game has picked it up, whether it be the pitching, whether it be the base running, whether it be the hitting, whether it be the defense. But, you know, we talked about it at the beginning of the year, and Link did. That was what they were worried about. That was going to be their weakest link. And something that he thought was going to be his weak, weakest link has now become one of his strong suits for this team coming into today with a 980 fielding percentage. I'm not sure if it still holds true fully in baseball, but in softball, I had a friend of mine continue to reiterate that offense wins championships, but defense secures the wins. So it used to be that defense wins championships, but you got to score some runs, right? You do, but if you talk to anybody, especially Coach Martin back in the day, he would have told you, <laughs> pitching and defense, pitching and defense. Okay, okay. Right center from Urso with Carey. Tibbs just shy of the wall. Well, he makes the grab. Gloves it for out number two. And a good start to the sixth here for Armstrong, who's at 16 pitches. Alex, from your playing days, how much did web gems in the fields really catapult your offensive attack the very next inning and or later down the stretch of the game. Well, huge. We talk so much about momentum and hitting is contagious, but just having that good juju going into the dugout, like you're still fired up, you're feeling good, you, you want to do something well for your team. So you had somebody just sell out to make a play, whether it was them laying out, making a great grab, whatever it was, but then that's going to carry over into the side of offense. And like I said, you're just dialed in and ready to attack. So when your foot's on the gas, you just want to keep it there. 2-0 count. Did you see little Lodis? That one in there for a strike from Armstrong. And Chris, when you're on the mound, how much more comfortable can you be as a pitcher on the hill knowing your defense has your back like that? Oh, man, it's everything. You know, it lets you go in there and know, hey, I, I don't have to make a perfect pitch every time. Yes, I need to be in the zone, but I can miss a little bit because I got guys behind me that can make a play. Now, the game has changed a little bit. You're seeing the long ball a little bit more. Um, so it definitely changes because, you, you know, you make a mistake now, it goes out of the yard. But as a whole, it just makes you feel more comfortable on the bump and gives you a little bit of ease to go in there and go, hey, I don't have to make the perfect pitch every time. A couple of opposite, uh, opposite field swings, excuse me, inside out swings from Long. And he keeps the count at two and two. Jacoby Long, so far today, a couple of hits, a walk in the first. He's been on base three times. He's got five hits on the weekend. Skies it, left center. It'll be Williams' ball. And the sixth. Dingus, Cantu, and Fisher. Here is Marco Dingus. So far, he is. Foul out in the second. And they walk in the third. Some of the highest exit velocities on the team. Dingus and fall ball really turned heads 
of the Seminole teammates and staff transferring from TCC, Tallahassee Community College, was committed to Maryland before the Knowles were able to secure the swap. And a change of heart, they are really glad Dingus is a Knoll. I feel like that'd be like the cardinal sin, letting this guy get out of Tallahassee. I mean, he's already here, right? They did the hard part, just keep him here. I agree. When I get the chance to talk to Marco again, I would love to ask him as he takes a strike, how do you go from New York to junior college ball in Tallahassee? How does that work out? I don't know, but Brian Henry over there now, he was very adamant to Coach Jarrett, uh, you need to get this guy. <laughs> I mean, here's another strike to Dinges. Brian was here the other night yep. alongside uh, David Ross, That's the right. former Cubs manager. Yep. Well, they run a camp together uh, every fall. See this fastball here. Good job right there, frame job by the catcher. And here's a strikeout. Cabo, most of his strikeouts are going to be on the swing miss on that fastball. Over 60% swing and miss on the fastball. You see this out of the zone. It's not able to lay off. Pretty rare from Florida State. And Dinges. And Dinges to chase something yep. like that. Now yours can too. High on the zone with some extra life to it. Yeah, that's that fastball I was telling you about. He gets a lot of swings and misses up there in the zone. One two coming to Cantu. Chops it foul. Cantu has struck out twice here today. to almost 180 games played at USF in his career is makes the transition of Florida State he has owned the Florida Gators this season there's a base hit and for Cantu he's got a one out sink yeah really good piece of hit here gets a breaking ball down stays on it and able to drive it right back up the box so much about how good Tibbs is just riding his hands through the zone like that but can too taking that breaking ball down I really like that piece of hitting just I don't know if it's just a lefty thing to me because I'm a lefty and I just think they're so <laughs> smooth but just their ability to just take those hands and that good path through the zone love it and, I, and I'm not gonna argue with you I do think those lefties have that pretty swing What was your mentality, Alex, lefty-lefty, when you'd go up there? Ooh, let the ball get deep. Have to let the ball travel. Try to hit it the other way. See a big shift right now selling out for this pitch. When I learned how to hit the ball the other way, I feel like that's when I became a really good hitter was you know, everybody can pull the ball. It's not a hard thing to do. I feel like it's one of the first things you're taught when you get a bat in your hands at a young age, but being able to be disciplined enough and patient enough in the box to just let pitches get deeper into your zone, that's when you can really cause some damage. Cantu gets his lead again at first. Cal Fisher, one of the top-ranked recruits out of the state of Wisconsin, originally committed 
to Link Jarrett at Notre Dame. Lifts it high. Foul and out of play. It'll be one and two. Fisher actually straight out of high school this summer. Went and played in the Northwoods League. Became an all-star for that summer league. Had 15 extra base hits. And Link Jarrett says he's as, as advanced of a freshman as I've ever coached. And he was so impressive in preseason that they have just had to find ways to get him involved. And so that trio there in the middle infields of Lodis and Ferro, and now Cal Fisher, has given Florida State an extra weapon in their toolkit and their arsenal. And you look at the numbers there, those three home runs, his first one coming on his first career at bat, the other two have been in clutch moments for FSU this season. Yeah, and it's not just him at the plate. Like you said, clutch moments, the play he just made a second ago up the middle, you know, an inning or so ago, backhands, easy flip to Lodis. I mean, started a great double play in a situation where the game could have gotten back to tied. Yeah, the home run against Louisville there in the rubber match. And a home run against Boston College that tied it there in the rubber match. Stairs of that one. Strike three. That hadn't been called all game for yeah, any team. Half. Not only inside, down too. I mean, that ball's down. It's not, it's below the knees. Yeah, that is slow. You can't miss those kind of calls. Not in a situation like this in the game, no. If that was the MLB, you would see that yeah. clipped off and replayed on social media. Because it'd be below the box. I was oh, yeah. going to say, at yeah. what point in college baseball do we get the box on the screen? Yeah. And the Hauser faithful and the fans are letting the umpire know. I don't blame him. I mean, we're not here to sit sit here and critique the umpires, but I think the best thing we can ask for, like I said earlier, is some consistency. Just be consistent. Whatever your zone is, if it's consistently good or consistently bad, just be consistent. No. Yeah, easy the frustration on Lodis' face, too. Well, I think the reason now they're frustrated, too, like we talked about, you weren't calling it earlier in the game. That's the big thing. But now as hitters, you have to know, hey, I got to be ready to hit that pitch. I mean, I make your adjustments. Here's the two on with two down. Now the inner half has become a part of the zone. Strike two. Ah, but trying to strike out the side. Quick check. Although that's an interesting check. As Cantu has yet to attempt a stolen base this season. Now full. Cantu going to be running on the pitch. Full count to Lodis. In on the hands, fouled back. We'll do it again. Any guesses on the one he's going to go to, Chris? Fastball or breaking ball? What you got? I'm sticking with the fastball right here <laughs> on, the, in, on the inner half. Me too. He called it. You want to do damage here, right? If you're the Canes, it's Viegas, Cuve, Gonzalez. Yeah, it's the heart of their lineup right here. Here's a strike to Viegas.
Nice play by Cam. Able to go get that. You saw Lodis get on his horse quick, though, making sure if Cam went there, he was going to be there to back him up. So one down here for Cuvée. Doesn't have a hit yet here in the game. Couple of strikeouts, though, for Cuvée. First inning, fourth inning. He's behind 0-1. Quickly, 0 oh 2. Two great breaking balls by Armstrong. Again, kind of go back to this. He can throw it down in the dirt right here, elevate the fastball. Went down in the dirt. Smith turning. What a play. My goodness. Yeah, third baseman to third baseman right there. Cam Smith making a heck of a play like Cuvay was doing last night. Kim Smith doing a good job that one. Kind of adjusting on that 5-6 hole action there. Good job playing the hole. Working glove side. Really smooth on the hot corner. Armstrong just hammering that breaking ball this inning. Foul back. And it's one and two here to Gonzalez. He has been on base in all three plate appearances. RBI single in the first has reached on an error twice. Hits it hard right field getting turned around as Tibbs. It's off the wall. And it's a long single for Gonzalez. It caromed so hard off the base of that wall. And Tibbs who's played out there all season was able to quickly get it back into the infield. Gonzalez, really nice piece of hitting here. Again, just riding those legs. Look, look at how he's going to get those hands extended, too. But the one thing I've noticed as well, I don't really love talking home field advantage, but Florida State right field, James Tibbs, doing a great job playing balls off the wall in the fence, whereas on the other side, we've seen Miami get beat a little bit. Florida State able to take an extra base and stretch those hits to doubles. But that's just kind of the benefit of playing on your home turf, knowing how the wall and the fence plays. Completely agree. He played that well. He got spun around, but it didn't, wouldn't have mattered. It was hit so hard, but he played it great off the wall. That home field advantage, knowing how that plays off the screen, how it plays off the padding, all that kind of stuff comes into play. And it changes the situation completely, right? Two outs with a runner in scoring position versus what it is right now. Two outs with a runner at first. In a close game is Carrier. Ahead in the count, two and one. Chopped, Smith stays with it, throws across. Side retired here in the seventh. I'll tell you what, Coach Artiega talked nothing but praises about Robert. He said, you're going to see a freshman come in that will not make you think he's a freshman. The way he carries himself on the mound, the stuff, everything. He said, this is the kind of guy that we're going to build around a little bit on the pitching staff going into next year. You see that right there, 94 mile an hour. Rolled over. And Gonzalez makes the play. It is the top of the order for FSU. Williams leading off. Smith now, the two hole hitter. Smith having a fine afternoon. Couple of hits, a home run, a double. Three runs driven in. 
And even his out was probably hit harder than anything else he hit. Up the middle. Miami had him shaded that way. And Gonzalez in the right spot, able to retire Smith. And as Suavemente comes out on the PA, Tibbs starts strolling to the box. And Robert come in and doing everything he's been, I've been told he'd do, filling up the zone, six pitches, two outs. Good looking change up. Ninety four there on the gun. Some notes courtesy of Devin Travis. Robert, sixty three percent usage of that fastball, twenty nine percent with the slider. That's his best pitch. And it has a forty five percent whiff rate with that slider. It hadn't thrown it yet. You think he's saving it? All I know is he's thrown the change up three times, and it's been great all three times he's thrown it. Tibbs waiting on it and rifles it into right center field for a knock, his second here on the afternoon. And Alex, there's your minute bat adjustments that we talk about with Tibbs. He's already seen the change up once. And sees the fastball, he elevates, so it's educated, educated guesses he has at the plate. Educated guesses, gut feelings, right? That's just stuff you can't teach to know the game of baseball, to have kind of the feeling of the ebb and the flow of how the at-bat is going. And I feel like that's really what hitting is, right? Like, you have information, of course, but what do you do with the information? And what are you feeling, right? And being able to have those gut calls is, is what we'll call them here today. Yeah. And James Tibbs just finds another way on base. Finding a hole, too. I love it because they were playing him in the shift. So heavy defense on the right side. I'm A. Ferrer. We haven't seen a lot of offense, too, from Florida State in a couple innings. It's their first hit with two outs this afternoon. Good okay. stats there from our, our guy behind us, Jason McGee. Yeah, and I'll tell you what, that's what they did yesterday really well were two out hits. That's what Miami did earlier this afternoon, a couple of runs mm -hmm. across the board. Hey, good things happen with two outs. You can't ever put your head down. Well, I always tell pitchers, man, after you get those two quick outs, like Robert did with six pitches, can't lose focus. Got to close the inning out. 2-1 to Ferrer, and Jaime was sitting on a fastball, got out in front, and it's two and two. One of the things, too, that we got to talk to Coach Arriaga about was really just the baseball IQ. And, and something that he was saying was, you know, today's athlete doesn't have as much baseball knowledge. And when they get to college, we got to teach that. That's something that James Tibbs does so well and gets to share with his teammates. It's just that next level thought process of letting the game kind of dictate and tell you what it's going to do. Right? As athletes, I think we're so often trying to control the game ourselves, but a lot of time, the baseball game, the softball game, is really dictating those answers for us. Yep. Solid work from Ferrer laying off that one, breaking away. There's that slider by Robert you were talking about right there. Tight late break. See why he gets a lot of swings and misses on it. Count is full. Tibbs is going on the pitch. And just catching a piece. His Ferrer will do it again. What if I told you guys that in the everyday lineup, James Tibbs leads Florida State in stolen bases? Five for six. I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> I feel like he's just a really well-rounded dude. I'm, I'm surprised. <laughs> I'm a power hitter leading the team. I mean, I know Acuna, but Acuna is a freak of nature. You don't always have to be the fastest to be the smartest. That's actually, I'm just saying. no, you are correct. If you're a smart base runner, you can really get away with some stuff. You're right. You get good jumps. You get overlooked. Swing and a miss. There from Ferrer. And the inning is over. And really settled the game down. And you showed the stat when he first came in, too, what he'd done last time when he went first batter gets a base hit, and he went three scoreless. 
Well, tonight, first batter hits a missile up the middle, but FSU turns it into a double play, and since then, he's kind of just set it into cruise control. Scanlon Torres Costello. There's Diamez Ross in center field as Williams is now in left field. Jaime Ferrer out of the game. Knowles have been doing that in late innings. Defensive changes for FSU. I think Jared always talking about we have to be hard to score on. On the ground, gobbled up by Fisher. And one down. And especially late in the game when you got the lead. Torres with one down in the Miami eighth. Now two and oh. That one skied. Right field. Tibbs battling the sun. Shields his eyes and he makes the draft. Giving the grin over there to Diamez, like, man, I know I got my shades on, but it's still tough. And Diamez now in center field, as we talked about. Pretty cool connection between Diamez and Alex Powers here in the booth. Yeah, Diamez means a lot to me. So he's from my hometown, and I started a scholarship a couple of years ago, and Ross was the first recipient. We went to the same high school, and I awarded a scholarship to an athlete that was playing in high school. They didn't have to be necessarily going to play collegiate ball anywhere, but it was just something to help with some tuition or just really costs of having to go to school. So I'm super proud of Diamez and I've loved watching him get to play. He's so sweet too. He always comes up whenever I'm in town. If I make it over to a game, if I'm covering softball or today and BP gave me a hug. So I'm really grateful. Yeah, he did. He came over and gave you a big hug. He always has that big smile on his face. Really the ultimate locker room guy. Hasn't been easy, no doubt. Splitting time this season with Max Williams, but his attitude and energy infectious in that Knowles clubhouse. I feel like he's just another guy, kind of like James Tibbs, just loves the sport of baseball. He's Feels like he's forever in debt to the game for everything that's allowed him to do, see, accomplish. You can't teach that kind of heart when the guys just are so appreciative of what they get to do every day. Totally agree. Hi, Chopper. Going to be a tough play for Smith coming in. Oh, he made it. That's as good as it gets, folks. Six. It was a phenomenal double play that the Knowles took to end the inning when he first came in. Wow, West rifled it right off Robert. He's able to recover and the first out of the inning recorded by a pitcher himself. Yeah, and Armstrong, like you said, going back to Armstrong, just coming in and doing what he's supposed to do, get the guys back in there, let his defense play behind him. And he's done an outstanding job of that. Here's Dingus. I got to give a shout out real quick. Here at Hauser is the 1 0 coming into Dingus. We talked about how good the crowd has been, as that one's fouled. My buddy Brett Nevitt, who covers Florida State better than anyone, baseball. Total attendance for the weekend 19,157, a new program record for a three game series. Outstanding. Dingus. Right field with Carey. There 
it goes. A big insurance run for Florida State in the eighth. Some fireworks here. Den just must have said something. He's got an entire hurricane infield wanting to come in after him. Marco Den just continues the opposite field power saga here of the Florida State team. And a little bit of spice on the base path. I love it. He's fired up. It's a big rivalry. Give me all the passion, all the heart. And he hit that one. That was borderline in the other batter's box. But yeah, a little, a couple comments must have been made. Yeah, well, yeah, and I, I saw what he fired him up with, too. Yeah. Coming out hacking first pitch. Like it by Cantu, though. Let's get the final few outs of this game play out. Things got steamy here at Hauser. I like it spicy. You got to have a little bit of that in FSU Miami. It wouldn't be my FSU Miami if you didn't have a little bit of that. And hey, what does it do? It gets Mongo to come out here and say, I, I think I need to get involved in this too. I need to do the Knowles cheer. I think what it was too was Torres followed them back, Florida State in as they were doing the celebration once Dingus got to home. It was kind of everything else was kept on the field between Urso, Gonzalez, Dingus, but then Torres walked back following the Florida State team. And a strikeout recorded there of Cantu. Good yeah. bounce back there from Nick Robert. Yeah, definitely was. And a great changeup right there again by Robert. You know, like you said, the slider is supposed to be his go-to pitch, but that changeup today for him has been very good. Fisher. Left center with Carey to the track, caught by Viegas. And the inning is over. Last three outs right here. Well, could be the last three outs right here. First pitch strike, a good start for Armstrong against Urso. JD 0 for 3 so far. And Armstrong now over the 50 pitch barrier. He has, again, really calmed the seas here for Florida State. They have needed a big step up out of the bullpen here this weekend, down a couple of arms. Wake Forest looming next weekend in Winston-Salem. And they have answered the bell here so far. Yeah, and you hope to get lighter back maybe next weekend. And that right there, I'm sorry, that's been called a strike on the Knowles. That's a strike. That is the inconsistency. You see Link Jarrett fired up right here. He knows. He understands the situation. That's not even on the black. That's inner third. On the ground, Smith. One down. One more update on ejections. Edgardo Viegas. Ejected from the game as well in between innings. Left fielder for the Canes. Goodness. So Viegas, who's due up to hit here in the inning, will not. Two ground balls, two outs. Florida State, one out away from sweeping Miami. Hauser coming to its feet. Sold out crowd. All weekend long, a new program record for attendance in a three-game series. Florida State baseball back to its old ways here under Link Jarrett in year two. Looking for win number 30 in a perfect rivalry week as Jake Kulikowski, the pinch hitter, in for Viegas. 
And the brooms indeed being brought out. It'll have to wait. How about Kulikowski? Couple of pinch hit opportunities this weekend. He has looked really good for Miami and J.D. Arteaga. Yeah, that, people don't understand just how hard pitch hitting is, right, Alex? I mean, it's tough to come off the bench, especially not in the ninth inning when you've been sitting all game to come in and produce, and he did right there. It is tough, but I think the beauty of pinch hitting is you know that the pitcher is going to go right at you because you haven't been in the game. You're not seemingly that threat that maybe some of the other hitters have been, so it's kind of a free swing or two, if you will, especially if you can hit early in the count. First pitch strike to Cuvay. Tying run is on deck in the form of Dorian Gonzalez if Cuvay can get on base. Prior to Cuvay's at bat, but it, even looking back in the last inning, I think that swing by Dingus was so big because only having a two-run lead, I feel like, was a little too close for comfort for Florida State sitting a little pretty with the th three-run buffer right now. So that swing from Dingus was a big one. I totally agree. Here's a strike, and it's one and two. The Canes down to their final strike. Kulikowski at first. I'm Armstrong right here. I'm sticking with a fastball in. And he went slider and hit him. And so Miami is going to bring the tying run to the plate. See this slider just kept carrying in. Ooh, got him right on the knee. Uh. Was he trying to back foot that? Yeah, and it just kept coming in. It hit on that right on the people call it. You know, you have the not you have the funny bone. I call it the not so funny bone. But he <laughs> hit that right on the outside of that knee right there. You've got one of those in your knee? Oh, oh I only knew about the one in the elbow. Oh yeah. I'm surprised <laughs> you being a hitter hadn't been hitting one of those before. Uh, no, I tried not to get hit. Bounces in there. 1 and 0 oh to Gonzalez. This might be Armstrong's last batter. Now 2 and 0. Oh. Fans not happy, but that ball's off the plate. Not a bad miss, but off the plate. On deck for Miami is Lorenzo Carrier. Mm. Now three and oh. Gonzalez Jr. Three oh, green light up the middle. They're going to wave home the run. It's going to be cut off as touching the plate is Kulikowski. So Miami, not done yet. And kind of surprised there, 3-0. You're the winning run. Surprised giving him the green light right there with Carrier up next. But hey, worked out for him. Three-hit day for Gonzalez. You live for the opportunity, and Chris said it earlier, you want the ball in your hands. So if I'm Holtz, I'm feeling good. Let me ask you this, if you're Carrier, and in your career, when you had scouting reports of a pitcher who throws one pitch as his specialty, how does your mindset going up? But how much easier is it said than done if that person's pitch is as elite as they said? <sighs> tough, <laughs> really tough all around. But if I know that he's got one pitch that is what he's going to go to all the time, I mean, I am selling out for that pitch. If they throw a fastball by me first one, I mean, so be it. I'll take it. Next pitch, it's game on, baby. Hit hard, it's right at Rodis. Catch made, sweep in hand, Florida State. Takes down Miami again.